Uh, so I've added up over the last year, the TSI has attracted five point, no, four point five eight zero million dollars um, in government investment directly to the TSI, uh, but also includes the seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year funding for the co-design lab. So the most recent approach that we had from the Ministry of Health is for in the housing space where they have gone out to the market, they've approached providers and haven't had the sort of interest that they, that they wanted in approaching healthy homes and uh, community solutions to overcrowding. So they've come to the TSI and offered us a contract of $250,000 to lead that work. So that really brings us to the um, community-led enterprise and entrepreneurship, the second space that we're um, working in. And last time I mentioned the Cook Islands uh, Development Agency and our work with them to support community-led enterprise. Uh, they have now started three and a fourth enterprise um, in development. And that arose out of our supportive challenge to them to look at how they could do more with the resources and assets that they already had and take more of an enterprising, resourceful approach. Uh, this has now led to some support for the Cook Islands Development Agency looking at um, opportunities for housing development. The community own pockets of land. Um, we've been supporting them with um, brokering with the Housing Project <coughs> Office to look at the suitability of those areas of land for housing development and one area of land particularly looks very promising and could uh, accommodate up to <coughs> 27 houses. So this is um, part of the community-led um, enterprise development. We're also working with Manarewa and Makoto Marae uh, on some community-led enterprise and probably our, our flagship in this space is looking at how procurement is a, is a lever for social impact. That's the work that Tanya's been leading. We're working really closely with the procurement team and council, building the capacity of community organisations to take advantage of that, but also uh, building the capacity of uh, council officers to embrace this. So an example of a... Of a um, result in that area is that we've been working closely with the Manarewa local board and a residents group have now just got a subcontract from Downers to maintain the Riverton Reserve. So we really want to grow that opportunity and see that it's not just procurement through council contracts but also we're getting um, a lot of interest from uh, South Auckland businesses and employers like the airport company and others who want to draw on our experience and understanding of how procurement can be a lever for social impact and things like jobs. So lastly, um, we've talked about catalytic flagship projects uh, where we need to focus. Um, I think I'll just highlight really the skills hub at the airport. We've been part of a steering group that the airport have brought together to um, look at the possibility of a skills hub being embedded in the new infrastructure development around the airport. Uh, MSD and MB are also part of that. Last week I had two very good meetings with airport staff about how they could draw on the great work that's happened in the Māori and Pacific Trades Training Initiative. They basically want to take the model that's developed there and embed it in the Skills Hub. So they're really drawing on the expertise of Rob and Francis who've been leading that work. Uh, also, um, last week we had a very fruitful meeting with MIT and we've agreed to collaborate with their consortia for the Māori and Pacific Trades Training Initiative, but also retain the TSI-led consortia because of the strengths and the unique um, approach that we've developed, which has been close to industry and also the only consortia that's not led by a tertiary provider. So we've actually got more people into jobs who, weren't, who were unemployed rather than with tertiary providers who have... Um, given free fees to people who are already enrolled in courses in the tertiary institution. So I think with the airport and MIT, what, what I've seen as a pattern there is <coughs> stakeholders that were pretty sceptical about the T TSI now 
really on board. And um, with MIT particularly, we had quite a competitive relationship, and now I can say that it's a very promising um, collaborative relationship. And finally, we can't do this on our own. We're a very small team within the council <coughs> with a modest budget, but we're working across the whole council to harness a virtual team. Uh, we're, when I first started in this role, I thought it was, it was more like me um, recruiting and um, attracting people to the TSI. Another shift that I've seen recently is I've <coughs> had people proactively coming to us, wanting to come out to the TSI. They've heard that there's a real buzz and energy out there. And um, for example, the Auckland Design Office have um, proactively set up a South Task Force, come and meet with us and are looking at how they can collaborate. And also acknowledging in the CDAC um, review, uh, two positions in the new community development team have been allocated specifically to partner with us in the TSI. So um, I see really, really good collaboration happening within the council and it's harnessing all of that that we'll be able to achieve some good results. So just in conclusion, I wanted to say that um, this is really complex work. Um, there are no silver bullets, but what it's going to take is um, hard work, some strong relationships across multiple sectors, a lot of collaboration and us playing a role in knitting a lot of fragmented activity together to get impact. Uh, we need the space to try some new things and the trust to take some calculated risks. And we also need um, as many champions as we can get. And I was really heartened last time I came to this committee with the support that um, councillors gave for our approach. and. Um, I've been really encouraged by the ongoing support of particularly councillors like um, Councillor Filipina and Councillor Penrose who have been consistently along the way supporting our direction. Um, with all of this and the modest budget that we now have for recruiting a small team, I think that we can generate significant and positive social impact. Um, we're really poised now, I think, to put the accelerator um, on and deliver uh, some real transformational change. Thank you, Gail. <coughs> Are there any questions of Gail? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Gail, for your presentation. Um, my first question is we go to, I noticed up there you had our council, the council other departments that were working with yourselves. I just noticed that I didn't see any of our CCOs, Comet, Transport, Water Care, who have their largest installation in, this, in the area, et cetera, et cetera. We've got a very close relationship with ATED. I focused on that slide really with the council, um, Auckland Council <coughs> organisation, but um, Comet, we're collaborating really strongly with ATED and um, Auckland Transport. Um, we've been having some recent conversations with them about how we can uh, look at procurement opportunities there for employment. So I think our job is really to build that platform of relationships with everyone who can contribute and make a difference in the South. What Water care? Are we talking with water care? Or? Uh, not, not yet, but we'll get there. We've been a very, very small team, oh, and um, we're now going to be a team of um, ten. Um, and I think that will really step up mm. our engagement with other agencies. So supplementary, another one, Chair. Um, so my second question is regarding the Marae. I see you're working with two Marae. Um, I've been out to Papa Tuanuku quite a few of their co-papa. I'm just wondering, are you working with the other marae like Mataata? Um, 
Yeah. Papa Tuanuku. Actually, at Papa Whaua. Tuanuku, we've been contributing to some work around the community garden there, and um, they've become a bit of a hub for that mm. in the south, and have been talking about how they could create a cooperative to strengthen that work. So um, by just signalling a few highlights, I haven't been able to go into the detail of everything that we're doing. There's a bit more detail in the um, report that you've received. Um, and we will be rebooting the newsletter for the TSI over the next sort of month or so. So we want to really step up our communications about the stories and about the engagement and the momentum that we're building. Thank you, Mr Chair, and, and I'm sorry, Gail, you may have said this at the beginning, I just had to pop out to the loo. It, it occurs to me, and I'm still kind of processing some of our discussion that we had this morning with our disability community, if you take the transformative model for community development and the CDAC reorganisation and the outcomes that are being proposed there, and you overlay that against this model, it's a kind of lock... Uh, well, how would you, you know, it's a lock and key model. Well, what we're proposing fits this. And I think we just haven't kind of explained, there's something that we're missing with our community, which is, if you look at the, the blue bit, which is a tapping into existing assets initiatives, this is making the community development model live across all the parts of the council family. <coughs> the getting in there and working in partnership with the, the community is our community brokers who can go out and partner promiscuously with the community and make it work on a community by community, place by place aspect. And in the middle is the kind of the, the whole set of, of kind of the, the catalytic hub that is the expert team that, that holds a lot of that together. And at the risk of raising any of the previous discussion, sitting right in the middle of that is the DNA of things like um, accessibility for all, equal opportunities for, for people with disabilities, making sure we think of the disabled community and all their abilities with everything we do. That's what we're doing here when you think of the needs of the, um, of the, the community of the South. And I just think we need to, as we, we kind of try and explain what we're doing in that other sphere, we almost need to use this model to say, without what we've reorganised, it makes it harder to do the Southern Initiative, and the Southern Initiative is a step ahead of a really good on the ground explanation of why community development works. Just to build off that, I might just get Tanya to, mean, to say a little bit about the work that we're doing <coughs> with um, Māori Disabled Community in South Auckland. Uh, kia ora koutou. Um, so our modus operandi is about co-designing and working very, very closely with the end user, with ordinary people, with the people who are affected. So we've been um, working in collaboration with Te Rōpū Waiora, which is our Fano Haua Māori Disabled <coughs> Organisation, and working with Fano Haua themselves to look at how we will cre can create together enterprise opportunities for the Māori disabled community to themselves be self-employed, to be enterprising, um, so and also to uh, develop um, skills that will help them, not only in employment, but in life as well. And this goes back to the issue I think that the group before was talking about was about dignity and inclusion. And so we are working really, really closely to ensure um, that we have quite a focus on that, particularly as the South has the largest proportion of disabled people in Auckland. And on um, Monday last week, we were invited by Treasury to an event at Te Papa in Wellington about inclusion in New Zealand. And we took um, two people from um, Te Rupu Whaiora with us to that event. So this is demonstrating the way that we're working as a team, that we're partnering up with our community colleagues and um, creating opportunities for them as we um, get opportunities ourselves. And I think that was really significant. They made a really significant presence at that event and also represented how inclusiveness includes being inclusive of people with disabilities. And um, we challenged them to provide um, an, a, a deaf, a sign language interpreter. So we were, um, I suppose, 
influencing how inclusive they made that event, and it was really noted by the Treasury people organising the event how difficult they actually found it to find a sign language interpreter. So that was an educative <laughs> opportunity. Thank you. Uh, oh, Councillor Cashmore. Yes, thanks, Mr Chair. Gail, congratulations to you and the team for the work that you have been doing. You've certainly come a long way in a very short piece of time. To keep enabling that sort of work, you have to be able to publicise the achievements. So how are you going to measure those achievements and how are you going to publicise, you know, bringing TSI's lamp out from underneath the yep. bush that it shine brightly <coughs> in the community of all of Auckland? Uh, this week, Jim and I met with Carl Ferguson and made a request to get a comms person embedded in the TSI team for the next two or three months to address exactly that. Mm -hmm. And also we've been looking at how do we develop a reporting process now that can track progress and communicate the results that are being achieved. I think so far we've just been forming the new TSI and developing this um, approach, but we're really now at the time that we need to step up the communication and get a much clearer um, reporting mechanism in place. Thank you. Thanks, no other Bill. questions? Oh, oh, sorry. Just <coughs> McDonald. I, I support, um, oh thanks Gail, thanks for the presentation, I support um, Councillor Cashmore's view too that um, there's a lot of reporting of, you know, collaborative relationships going on and, and stuff, activities, um, <coughs> but in terms of the <coughs> sort of nine or ten priorities you've outlined here, I'm not really seeing a deliberate um, strategy around, okay, so here's an issue in Mangere around kids not going to early childhood um, and, you know, how do we uh, work with the various agencies to try and get the turnaround and the progress, I suppose, um, for each of those communities and where you've identified um, some of their needs and, and uh, some of the issues. I just wanted to um, add, uh, firstly, thank you. I, th I think this team are doing a great job and I think... Uh, what I'd just like to remind us all of is that the questions I've been asked since I've been around are, are we being a bit timid in the investment we make and are we seeing outcomes? And I think it's important, A, that we uh, take the approach we are and step our way through. Outcomes will be a longer run thing. It's about getting the flywheel to turn and momentum to get going. And I think the, the team are doing a fantastic job of getting that momentum. And I think the most important thing is the amount of collaboration that's being brought in now. I think we can't do this with one massive team of ours. We need to bring <coughs> everybody, both inside the council and around us, together. And I think Gail and her team are having a great uh, outcome with that. We are committed to communicating to you and everybody how that is going so that we can keep that support because long-run outcomes need long-run support. And so I just encourage you to keep uh, that in mind as we continue to push. Thank you. Councillor Knight. Yeah. Um, thank you, Chair. Look, I, I just want to say that to Gail and the team, congratulations. Um, right from the beginning, I had some problems in getting this thing going to where it is, and it was starting to go up the track, but we're on track. And as we said from day one, the most important thing about this was to get jobs. Without it, we've got nothing. And to that, now we can add the housing crisis that's happening in accommodation out there, which are two vital things. But the crucial thing about TSI it is the only thing we have that links the government agencies together Absolutely. with something that we're driving. And I think that's the key factor here, that we're going to maximise on that opportunity and drive all those government agencies involved in what we're doing ourselves to get some results. So I just want to put that on the table and say to the council, we really need to back it and keep going.